check him out. It's half a cloud of his big spooky tendrils. Man, you don't want to see what he does with those tendrils when it gets dark at night. My boy be feeling things up. Left, right and centre. And you know, overtly generous is a very traditional man. He isn't one that has fallen, that has succumbed to the ways of Slanesh. So he's not very happy with the machinations of this touchy-feely tentacled creature and he's gonna punish him with it. Punish him for it! How do you do that? It's quite simple. Have you never encountered a touchy-feely tentacle thing in real life? You purge it with fire! Burn it! So I do hope there's gonna be some tactical marine flamers. But we'll see, so it's Lictor Alpha vs Apothecary on the Ashes of Typhon Redux. And I think I've featured this map once. It's... It's pretty cool actually, yeah I like this. Inikura did this map and it's a nice little edit. So... It moves the VPs from being in this area and this area to being spread out in a nice contested line down the middle. So you have three contested VPs. And it's very difficult with this layout to ever have a situation wherein you can control just two VPs and defend them both very easily from one position, which you definitely could on the old Ashes of Typhon. So that's nice. And I think it just makes the map a little bit bigger as well by sort of fleshing out this area, adding a little bit more space. It's an interesting little rework. Have you done all else, Inny? Looking at it, I don't really feel like he has. Not really. Yeah, a very simple rework, but I like it, yeah. Make the VPs more contested. And widen up the lanes a little bit as well. This area now is no longer just one lane that you can kind of cover with one setup team, which is nice. And that... That contested power node that was in the middle here is now down this side. So it gives more value to this lane, even though you don't have two VPs in it. Yeah, cool, cool changes. Anyway, fast attack flamer. Ah, I told you. I told you. All those fucking tendrils that Arthur's got. We don't want that. We're going to burn that shit. So the flame has come out. He's, he's attempted... No, he hasn't attempted a gem bash. He's got a gem bash. And he's bloody power noding it, the mad lad. But Arthur's actually counter bashed him decap down there so we're seeing an attempt to build gens at this side but the homogons are going to prevent that so this is this is what gem does i don't know if you guys know but this guy is also known as page um he just loves playing 3v3s with two units scouts and tacks and his apo and he just fast techs Tries to get multiple Terminators out as soon as possible and carry in the late game. But whilst he's doing that, in order to obviously not get base locked with a shit amount of units he has, you know, like his military force is tiny, he's constantly backcapping with the scouts and constantly running the flamers around, just burning gens, trying to be as useful as he can with only two units. So, how does that manifest in a 1v1? Well, there's just a whole lot of running around and not a whole lot of fighting, basically. Warriors coming out here with very low HP and trying to actually bash the power node. I don't really like this because the DPS of Warriors is frankly abysmal. You never get the Warriors for the DPS, you get the Warriors for the disruption. Yeah, I think he realizes like that is not a good use of the Warriors time. All the units cap the same uh, the, the same speed, right? So, well, not all units, but the vast majority of units cap at the same speed regardless of their damage. So put your lower DPS units capping and your higher DPS units to get rid of the gens. Odd game for Arthur, he says. Yeah, I mean, it, it's definitely a strange one because Gem is playing so weird. Just running around capping and stuff. And the Lictor Alpha is just running around capping as well. But... I don't know, I don't really think it's been working out for Jem because he has been unable to maintain really any map control. He's only got one requisition point here and he hasn't been able to keep his gens, 
So even though he's paid so much less in upgrades, he's, he's only got, well he's got two walkers here and Flamer, but you know we're looking at two upgrades here, we're looking at the Warrior Brood and a Ravener Brood and honestly Gem is not that far ahead. This is obviously a 9 for Arthur, but he's countered by building free gens over here at the Contested. Paige needs to start getting some more gens up quite quickly if he wants to go with this tactic of rushing straight into tier 2. Don't know if he will. What did he just build? Did he just replace the node? Yeah, he did. Not great. Let's see how much requisition he loses here. How much is he going to get back when it gets destroyed? It looks like not many because it looks like the node is out healing it. Wow. Yeah. That is not a good use of 125 wreck actually. That's really bad. He's just throwing away resources. And you see the ratting, so to speak, this strategy of, of running around and avoiding fights and just trying to cap and harass but not take head-on military engagements. Uh, it's not working because Gem's army isn't getting any bigger. But Arthur's army is just gradually getting more and more upgraded and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. But on the other hand, Arthur is massively behind on VPs. Like crazy behind on VPs. So that is something, I suppose. But you can't imagine that that will go on for too much longer, given how much bigger Arthur's army is compared to Gems. It's a strange one, this. I hope that Arthur does not go for double Raveners though, that could be quite the fuck up. That would delay his tier 2 quite considerably. And honestly, Gem is at this point getting somewhat close to a tier 2. Yeah, he's starting tier 2 now. Okay, no, Alpha cancelled it, cool, okay, that's fine. But Gem's gonna be able to get that VP down there. Arthur needs to make sure he catches the mid VP. He really needs to make up some of this ground that he's lost on the VPs. Because he is super far behind right now. And unfortunately, he's idling with Termigants in the mid. I guess he doesn't realize that he's not capping. Ippo, in spite of the Sanguine, which generally is an amazing war gear against ranged troops. Yeah, just you can't do anything here. Just too isolated against free, bursty ranged troops that are designed to counter melee. Good luck. So the attacks do get their little cap, they've normalised the VP situation and now they're just running away from the Lictor. This is quite the ridiculous game. Oh no, Arthur's floating. He's not flying too bad, he only floated about 25 power. So it's not the end of the world. Hormagon's there, actually flank from the other side. So get a bit of a pincer on the attacks and they're forced to retreat. What's going on over here? Scouts are just decapping. So I really am curious what gem is going to get in tier 2 here. There is no way he can just go tier 3. That, that, there's no way. Like, you're not going to be able to maintain any map control. You're going to get base up, surely. Okay, yeah, this makes sense. So he knows he's got to tier 2 first. Though, honestly, it was kind of close. So he's just going to rush that razor back and then, I guess, maybe use, like, drop pod tax and ship afterwards, maybe? Multiple attacks are very strong with Razorbacks and also very strong with the Apo, so I could see that. We'll see. Lictor trying to do what he can to control these scouts does actually force them off, which is nice. That other scout that just got hooked should die in one hit, but fortunately they're a little bit too quick for the Lictor there. They get out. We lose one model. Better than nothing, I suppose. And yeah, Gem's really struggling to maintain his power here. He's just rebuilding this power node, and I don't like this play. You're only saving one gen, and uh, is that worth the 125 wreck? I doubt it. It's not like Gem is floating crazy amounts of wreck. If he was, I wouldn't mind the play. But he actually pretty badly needs wreck right now to get a few more attacks out, to get ASM out, to get P devs, to get anything. More upgrades on the Lictor, kind of questionable upgrades to get right now. I love the Toxic Sis, I think it's a great upgrade, but I don't know why you get it right now. Generally it's a good anti-melee upgrade, so it gives you a little bit more max HP, and I think, does it give you regen? 
no, it doesn't give you innate regen, but it, the actual ability itself will heal the Lictor Alpha for 150 HP over 10 seconds. So that, you know, that's nice. But it also does AoE damage over time. Basically, you use it against melee squads, and even against like ASM and stuff, it can be nice. The damage over time isn't huge, but then just getting the 150 HP heal in the middle of combat, pretty nice. My point is, where is the melee? Like, what are you using that for? Okay, Bab Strangler. No, not Bab Strangler. The uh, Forex Swarm Warrior Brood comes in, so I'm going to snare the Razorback there with the Electroshock Grubs so that hopefully the Venom Brood can finish it off. Apo should have got out of that Razorback a long time ago to tie up that Venom Brood while the Razorback tried to disengage, but I guess even that wouldn't help because Venom Brood do actually have fire on the move, so all the Venom Brood had to do while the Razorback was running away there and the Apo was tying them up was force melee. And due to the fact that the Razorback was snared by the Electroshock Grubs, I really shouldn't have got out. So Jem, whilst he was delaying with it, Razorback has actually stole Arthur's primary gen farm. Oh my god, what a nightmare. And honestly, these tacks can kind of solo this entire blob. Look at how badly they are beating up the Venom Brood because they've actually activated Kraken Rounds, which gives them 20% more damage against heavy infantry, which the Venom Brood are. And, you know, it's ironic given the name Kraken Rounds, but that ability buffs all their damage by 20%. That is, including the Flamer, that is including their Fists. So yeah, they, they kick the ass of the Venom Brood in one turn again, but the Lictor Alpha comes to save the day. Now they need to get this Power Farm back, and this is where dropping the constant 125 wreck on Power Nodes could actually be quite valuable, certainly if Alpha only keeps Termigans there to try and get the Gem Bash, because he really needs to get that Power Farm back. Not that Arthur needs the power super bad, though it actually looks like it would be nice for him. He could be going tier 2, sorry, tier 3 relatively soon. He's floating a shitload of wreck. But actually, what's more important is Paige is the one who really needs the damn power. He's got no gens in his natural, he hasn't even got a node in his contested, and the gen that he did build over here on this contested has been stolen by Arthur. Though Paige is now trying to get it back. Okay, Venabrood have come over, and they have actually bashed the node. Venabrood will destroy nodes very quickly. And Arthur needs to realise that Paige has once again rebuilt the power node. Come on. There you go. Needs to get this power farm back. He's too slow. He's just rebuilding it. I'm not entirely sure what Arthur is looking at, to be honest. He's just got his, his Gene Stealers out and has moved them forward. I mean, the, you see, you get the full XP for destroying the generator every single time that is done, so... Feeding a good amount of XP there to the Tyranid Blob. But they're only just reaching level 2 on one of those Termigans, so... You know, this has been a game where obviously not a lot of units have died. Because, really, they just haven't been taking full-on engagements. Ippo trying his best there against the Gene Stealer is going to have a bit of a foot nade attempt. Nice purification heal there. Yeah, Gene Stealers are smart. They're going to move on to the shotgun scouts nearby, focus on them first, and then deal with the Ippo afterwards. That makes sense. But honestly, the Gene Stealers now running into the Tactical Marines as well. They're too low on HP. They do need to get out of there. Okay. And the main blob of Arthur is going to push deeper take over the natural requisition here and the natural power and yeah I mean okay I don't know why he's going for warrior brood now I guess he wants um, melee synapse for his new sealers honestly Arthur at this point should just be getting a freaking swarm rod you know you've got superior map control you've got more than enough units to beat your opponent in a fight like I don't know why he, Arthur is engaging with a lone Ravener here against literally the entire army of Gem. Doesn't make any sense, and he loses that Ravener due to it. A well deserved loss, I would say. Do we have the melee synapse coming? Yeah. But again, now he's fighting kind of piecemeal. Has he got reinforcements? He does have reinforcements coming. Lictor Alpha probably should be getting on the VP here. Something should be getting on the VP. Arthur's once again bleeding VPs, which really is quite unacceptable at this stage. And Paige is just going tier 3. Ooh, nice, nice retreat grenade. Yeah, good retreat grenade. 
does wipe out only one warrior. Unfortunately, those guys are super, super tanky. Desiccated lavas are spawned out, so these guys will be getting a debuff, taking 20% more damage, but honestly, it doesn't matter. They're just regening through it all. The airport does not give a fuck. Armor of the Policarian there. You really don't see this very often anymore. But it's nice. Victor putting in the work now on the tactical marines. They're going to have to retreat out of there. The scouts have already left. And it's just going to be the Apo trying to solo the force. Our oh, nice flesh up from the Lictor Alpha to control the Apo. Forcing the retreat from him as well. So the question is, what will Gem be purchasing in tier 3? You have to assume it's going to be Terminators. Because he's already got a Razorback. And therefore, Arthur already has multiple AV options in order to deal with that. So why would you go for a Predator? I have no idea why Arthur just walked away from the VP to cap the natural wreck point. Brother, you're on 116 VPs, man. You need to be capping the VP. What are you doing? Forget the wreck at this point. Jeez. I think he might have forgotten which colour he is. Gosh. That's crazy. I mean, honestly, at this rate, uh, you know, how the heck is Gem on 260 VPs with two units? This is absolutely ridiculous. The classic Space Marine knockback spam the shotgun blast into the purification right seal, controlling the Lictor Alpha there quite effectively. Bit of a gem bash going on. Gonna be stealing the gems again. Let's have a look at the resources. Yeah, he's, he needs a little bit more power does gem in order to be able to summon some terminators. I assume that's what he wants here. He's got ample red. Gene stealers obviously can take on tactical marines very easily normally, but with the purification rights heal and the andacial no no fear, might be a little bit more questionable. Now they're getting healed by the armor of the apothecarian as well. Yeah, there's just not enough regen for the gene stealers here. Where are the support? I don't know why Arthur's fighting piecemeal constantly. Where are the melee warriors? They're down at the other side of the map here. Just total mispositioning of units. And here comes the Terminators. Now, I don't know, like, Terminators... The inspiration buffs are going to be huge, killing rippers and shit. But... Ultimately, the counters to the Terminators are already on the field right now. You've got Adrenal Land Warriors and you've got Gene Stealers. We even see a Carnifex coming and... Yeah, Carnifex is a pretty strong counter to Terminators, that has to be said. It doesn't even really matter which Carnifex variant you go for. They're all pretty good against them. Because of like the, the thin, tall nature of Carnifex compared to the big, wide, thick chassis of a lot of the vehicles in this game, the missile rack terminators actually are not particularly effective against Carnifexes. Uh, Carnifex. Carnifex is the plural for Carnifex, if you didn't know. It is plural and a singular combined. So even with the anti-vehicle upgrade, the Terminators are not really that effective against the Carnifex. So we'll see how it does. The problem right now is it doesn't have an upgrade. I don't think Alpha has the power. Honestly, just go melee. Just go farm back. Get the extra HP regen, the extra max HP, and keep the pressure on. They don't have enough solid AV to be able to pace through the HP regen of the farm back. Be basically immortal. But all the capping is proving problematic for Arthur. Like this, this big blob right here, this is so unnecessary. Why do you need to send all this to take back the power farm? What the heck? Why is the Carnifex even here? <laughs> Move the Carnifex elsewhere, it really does not need to be here. There is no AV on the field except for the Terminators, which we've already established are not very good at killing Carnifex. 
So forget it. I mean, God, you could have just sent Venom Brood to go deal with that. Never mind it, everything. It's all about the VPs. The main army should be down here pushing this off with the Carnifex. Keep the Lictor and the Venom Brood over here. You know, Venom Brood can detect the scouts, Lictor can just kill them, blah, blah, blah. That, that kind of strategy would, would be more effective. Like, I don't understand why the Tyranids are pushing this far across to this side of the map. Forget it. Just get the VPs. And once you push the Terminators off, then you can push down this way and base lock your opponent. So Terminators teleporting away there. So now they've got no teleport. So get Gene Stealers and Adrenal Blood Warriors on them Terminators, and they are in for a rough time. Apothecary being very annoying there with his armor, the Apothecary, and so when he's out of combat, he gets some very large speed boosts. They're going kind to of struggle to catch up to him because of it. Uh, Termagants here, very out of position. I'm going to have a fun time. Oh, here we go. We're going to see a missile barrage from the Terminators there. What's it called? Cyclone missile barrage. Uh, just, to, just to bash the gens. I actually think that's a bit of a mistake from Gem actually, he should be capturing this VP. I don't know, maybe he knows that there's a big blob coming up in this direction. But I don't really think this is the time to be trying to capture power. I guess he needs to actually, because he doesn't have his natural gen farm. And he is actually quite power starved. Has he got a last cannon? Yeah, he does have a last cannon to deal with the Carnifex. For some reason, the Carnifex does not even have an upgrade yet. Here we go, finally, he's getting the format upgrade. That is super late. That should have been absolute priority number one. Where are the Gene Stealers? Okay, the Gene Stealers are chilling in base. They really need to be with the Adrian Land Warriors. I mean, at this point, I would just give up and say, for God's sake, Arthur, just put the Gene Stealers and the Adrian Land Warriors on the same goddamn hotkey. And call it a day, because, <laughs> man, they're so weak when they're used individually, but you use them together and they're amazing. Uh, missile Rat goes in there, but it kind of misses the, the kind of fix, which is unfortunate. Last kind of getting a load of free hits, though. Something should be disrupting the last cannon. I don't really understand what's going on here. The Bow Strangler Worry Brood could very easily be disrupting that last cannon, rather than doing nothing, basically, to the Terminators. And I think... I think... Yeah, I think Arthur's lost, because... Ooh. Yeah, it gets another shot off, and that kind of fix now just dies to the power fist from the Terminators. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Okay, kind of fix needs to charge away. Okay, we're not going to get that. We've got the flanking gene stealers that are not going to be able to wipe the last dev. They need to turn around and attack the Terminators. I don't know if the Terminators have their, their teleport on cooldown or not. No, gene stealers. No, this is not the time. <laughs> uh, uh save me guys this is not the time to be decapping a power point which does not even have generators can you kill the terminators can you go and get rid of the tactical marines so you can take the vps okay okay we're gonna see a tyranna formation that is gonna wipe his own gene sealers this is comedy central Arthur, i'm sorry about casting this but i'm uploading this now i don't i don't care how bad this game is i'm uploading it because i've we're so deep into it and honestly this is fucking hilarious i mean what was that what was that? Okay, and now we're going to get more Gene Stealers after we only have the Forex Swarm and we don't have any Dream Gland Warriors. Love it. Brilliant. 10 out of 10 players. How much are can effects? Like, you can nearly afford a can effects. Nearly. You got like 130 power. What are they? 150? Just get another can effects for Christ's sake. I really don't think Gene Stealers are going to cut it here. Are we actually going to see another Terminator drop from, from Gem? Is that actually what's going to happen right now? Oh my goodness. This is... This is torture. This is torture. Arthur, why do you even have Toxic Sis? Why do you not have Leap? I feel like that would be so much better for map control and countering scouts and that kind of thing. Well, sub 50 VPs for Arthur right now. Once again, he's really scared of that that power node. He's got to send the entire army to deal with that power node. But it's alright, don't worry boys, the game is still in Arthur's hand because he did actually manage to get rid of that power node. 
And he's going for triple gene stealers. Definitely not an overwatch mistake or anything. Nope, that is the best strategy with Tyranids. Triple gene stealers. Classic synaptic backlash times two and a beautiful purification rights heal there knocking over the gene stealers. Gene stealers do get in force off the last devs, unfortunately that is not much of a victory because quite frankly last devs not really relevant for this engagement anyway, they're purely useful as a capping unit. But don't worry, when gene stealer is gone, there is another to replace it. Has he actually got triple? He has actually got triple, that's hilarious. Honestly, if he just puts a gene stealer at each of these these points, he might actually have a shot at this. And now there is double terminators, Britain. So where are the other terminators? They're kind of coming over. Okay. I mean, Gem is not doing very well on the map control, but oh wow, the gene stealers are massively overextending. I wonder if he's suiciding them into the base because he didn't even mean to get triple. I don't think that's worth it right now. Okay, no, he's not. Aff is just having a, a fucking heart attack. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Arthur and, and I are going to have to have a talk after this one, that's for sure. As of the time of casting, we have yet to do our 2v2 top in trains, so hopefully we can sort out some of this madness. This is crazy. But there you go, our geriatric Arthur with his very slow reactions as such has managed to throw that game somehow against Jem. How impressed were you with the play guys? Tell me down in the comments below. Thank you for tuning in. <laughs> if you enjoy the content please leave a like, do leave a comment because if you leave a comment that will help us in the algorithm so more people can watch this top tier sirloin steak of Dawn of War 2 content. By heck, they're missing out, aren't they? If you can support me, do join the Patreon. Remember, if you become a patron, you will get access to exclusive content. That is all from you, boy Torpid. Signing out.